Hello friends, today we are going to see the solving tactics for Laplace transform and let me tell you this will act as a base for transient analysis. I am creating this video because one of my viewer has asked me to do a separate video on Laplace transform and I am here now. Okay, so let's start with the very basic things. So in transient analysis, you can get various types of voltage source. Either it can be constant, it can depend upon time it can be in the form of exponential also okay so let's say if you get a voltage source of one volt then the laplace transform for that it will be one by s and similarly for any constant the laplace transform will be k by s okay now let's say if your voltage source is depend upon t let's say it is t the laplace transform will be one by s square and if you want a proper formula for this then the laplace transform for t raised to n will be n factorial upon s raised to n plus one okay so let's say if you want the laplace transform of t square then it will be two factorial basically two upon s cube okay now let's see if you have a voltage source in form of exponential okay so let's say if you have e raised to minus 80 then the laplace transform for that it will be 1 upon s plus a similarly if you have a function like k e raised to minus 80 basically any constant is multiplied with that then the laplace transform will be simply k upon s plus a basically k is multiplied in both the side in your time domain side also and in your laplace side also okay now let's say if you have a voltage source of e raised to 80 then the laplace transform of that it will be 1 upon s minus a in e raised to minus 80 it was 1 upon s plus a basically you can see here you have minus and here you have plus only the thing is the sign is opposite and rest of thing will be same basically e raised to minus 80 will be 1 upon s plus a and e raised to a2 will be 1 upon s minus a okay let's say if you have a function like k e raised to 80 then the laplace transform will be k upon s minus a basically only constant is multiplied in both the side okay now let's come to the main point basically important steps okay from time domain we can go to the laplace transform very easily but the toughest part is coming from the laplace domain to the time domain okay so here we are going to see the various strategies that we have to follow for coming from Laplace domain to the time domain okay so let's say if you have s upon s plus a then to solve this we usually use q plus r by d formula but here we don't need to do that we can simply adjust the numerator and we can get our answer okay so let's say here you have s upon s plus a so the thing you have to do is you have to adjust this denominator into your numerator okay so for that what you are going to do you are going to add and subtract a okay so plus minus a okay so now here you can see if you have adjusted that you will get something like this okay and if you simplify this you will get 1 minus a upon s plus a now you can see you can get the inverse laplace transform of this very easily okay inverse laplace transform of 1 is delta right in all the transform whether it is laplace transform fourier transform or z transform the transform for delta will always be 1 okay so one ka inverse laplace transform is delta and you have minus and a upon s plus a will be a e raised to minus 80 okay this is what we have seen here okay now let's say if you get something like this 1 upon s plus a into s plus b okay so the traditional way to solve this thing is to go by partial fraction okay so here if you see the traditional way for this thing is partial fraction in partial fraction what you do actually is you take two constant basically a and b and separate these terms s plus a and s plus b okay so if you separate this you will get something like this okay and always you will have a operator in between this as plus okay so now in the traditional way the task is to find out this constant value okay so for that what you do so for a it will be numerator upon the remaining term which is not present here okay so the numerator is one and the remaining term which is not present here in denominator is s plus b okay so you will have the term one upon s plus b and here you are going to substitute s as minus a okay so if you do so you will get one upon minus minus a plus b as your constant value of a okay similarly for b again you will have numerator and the denominator remaining term which is not present in the denominator of b okay so which is s plus 
and the thing is here you are going to substitute s as minus b okay so if you do so you will have 1 upon minus b plus a so this was the traditional way and you can clearly see how lengthy it is let me tell you this type of stuff you will get in most of the sum so it's not a good practice to do this by traditional way okay? always you have to remember only this formula okay so if you get something like 1 upon s plus a into 1 upon s plus b then you can simplify this thing in into this formula okay so it will be 1 upon b minus a okay so whatever the constant value is present here you will just subtract from this to this okay so 1 upon b minus a multiply by this first term minus this second term okay so it will be 1 upon b minus a multiply by 1 upon s plus a minus 1 upon s plus b and let me tell you you are done with your simplification now you can take inverse laplace transform very easily okay so this is the constant value and the inverse laplace transform of this it will be e raised to minus at for this it will be e raised to minus bt with minus sign in between okay so that's it you can clearly see how easily you get to this inverse laplace transform from this very fastly okay now let's see more stuff like this now let's say if you have something like this s upon s plus a into s plus b okay the only difference between this and this is here in numerator it was one and here in numerator it is s okay so again the traditional way for this is very complex okay so here you can see again you have to do similar thing basically you are going to separate this then you are going to find out these two constant values again okay and we have clearly seen how lengthy it is okay so again we are going to use the formula for this okay but the thing is here the formula is slightly different here in this formula it was simply 1 upon b minus a first term minus second term okay but here the formula is you have to take minus a and minus b in the numerator also okay then the rest of the formula remains same okay so basically whenever you get something like this s upon s plus a multiply by s plus b you can simplify it with this formula 1 upon b minus a multiply by minus a basically this constant value with negative sign okay upon s plus a basically first term minus this constant value with negative sign upon this second term basically s plus b okay and now you can take inverse laplace transform very easily okay so the inverse laplace transform will be 1 upon b minus a minus a e raised to minus a t minus minus will be plus b e raised to minus b t okay you can verify this formula using this traditional way also okay now let's move ahead okay now this was the some important stuff about inverse Laplace transform to Laplace transform. Now let's move to some complex Laplace transform. Okay. So let's say if you have sin at, the Laplace transform for sin at is simply a upon s square plus a square. Let me tell you in transient analysis, you can get voltage source in terms of sine and cos also. Okay. Now let's see if you are in a situation when you have a laplace transform as 1 upon s square plus a square and you have to take inverse laplace transform for this okay here if you see in the formula of sin at you have a upon s square plus a square but here we don't have a okay here we have one here we have a okay so the numerator and this constant value is not same okay so for this the inverse laplace transform will be 1 upon a multiplied by sin at basically you have adjusted your numerator by just dividing it okay so here you can verify it sin at laplace transform is a upon s square plus a square okay so basically this a and a will cancel and you will have simply 1 upon s square plus a square okay now let's say if you have a function like cos at okay so the laplace transform for this is simply s upon s square plus a square if you observe carefully for sin at this constant value is reflected in the numerator but for cos at this constant value is not present here here you have simply s okay so it will be s upon s square plus a square for cos at and now let's say if you have a function like this e raised to minus bt into sin at okay so here you can see this function is a mixture of exponential term as well as sin at okay so for this type of situation first you have to take the laplace transform of sin at and then you have to adjust the effect of e raised to minus b2 into that okay so let's see this into the action okay so first we are going to take laplace transform of sin at so it will be a upon s square plus a square okay now 
we want the Laplace transform of e raised to minus b t multiplied by sin a t. Okay, so the effect of multiplication of any exponential value it will be the substitution of s with s plus b. Basically, basically you are going to replace your s with s plus b. Okay, so here you can see you are here you have minus b and here you have replaced your s with s plus b. Okay, so change it accordingly. Okay, if you have e raised to b t, then you are going to change s with s minus b. Okay, so here you can clearly see for sin a t it was a upon s square plus a square but after the introduction of this e raised to minus b t it become a upon s plus b the whole square plus a square okay just you have replaced your s with s plus b okay now let's say if you are in a situation like this you have a numerator of a then upon in denominator you have s plus b the whole square plus a square and you have to take the inverse laplace transform for that okay so for this type of situation we are going to take reverse action okay here first we have taken the laplace of sin a t then we have introduced e raised to minus b t okay but here we are going to take reverse move first we are going to neglect the effect of exponential then we are going to take the inverse laplace transform of remaining term okay so here you can see here in place of s you have s plus b okay so what you are going to do is you are going to remove the effect of exponential first okay so to remove the effect you are going to simply multiply your function with e raised to minus bt here you have s plus b so you are going to multiply it with e raised to minus bt okay and the remaining laplace transform will be simply a upon s square plus a square now you have to take inverse laplace transform of this only okay and you know from the formula that is a upon s square plus a square is the laplace transform of sin a t okay so your function become e raised to minus b t multiplied by sin a t okay so for this type of laplace transform the function becomes e raised to minus b t multiplied by sin a t okay first you have to neglect effect of exponential then for the remaining laplace transform you have to take inverse laplace transform okay now let's see one more situation here in numerator instead of any constant you have s and the denominator part is same basically s plus a the whole square plus b square okay so this situation is that here in numerator you have only s and in denominator you have s plus a okay to neglect the effect of exponential you should have the same term everywhere basically you should have s plus a everywhere okay but here in numerator you can see here you have only s and denominator you have s plus a okay so the very first step will be to adjust the numerator first okay so for that you are going to add and subtract a okay so here you will write s plus a minus a okay now you are going to split this s plus a on one side and minus a on one side okay so then you will get two term like this s plus a upon s plus a the whole square plus b square minus a upon s plus a the whole square plus b square okay now you can take inverse laplace transform very easily okay now here in the first term you can clearly see here you have s plus a and in denominator also you have s plus a okay so you can neglect the effect of exponential very easily okay so you are going to multiply your function with e raised to minus a t and you are going to simply take laplace transform of s upon s square plus b square okay and here you can clearly see in the place of s you have simply s plus a okay and there is no s present in numerator and as well as denominator okay so you can clearly neglect the effect of exponential by just multiplying your function with e raised to minus at and now you are going to take inverse laplace transform of 1 upon s square plus b square because you have already taken this minus a here okay so that's why you are going to take inverse laplace transform of 1 upon s square plus b square okay now if you take complete inverse laplace transform it will become e raised to minus a t s upon s square plus b square ka inverse laplace transform will be cos b t minus a e raised to minus a t and the inverse laplace transform for 1 upon s square plus b square is simply 1 upon b sin b t okay so for this situation when you have s upon s plus a the whole square plus b square first you have to adjust your numerator then you are going to take inverse laplace transform okay now let's say if you are in this situation let's say if you have something like k upon s square plus 6s plus 9 okay so for this situation first you have to adjust the numerator in a plus b the whole square form okay so here you can see here we have a denominator of complete square right 
ए स्क्वायर प्लस टू ए बी प्लस बी स्क्वायर बी इज थ्री थ्री का स्क्वायर इज नाइन राइट टू ए बी टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय वन मल्टीप्लाई बाय थ्री विल बी सिक्स ओके सो यू कैन क्लियरली सी दिस इज द फॉर्मूला ऑफ एस प्लस थ्री राइट एस प्लस थ्री का होल स्क्वायर विल बी एस स्क्वायर प्लस सिक्स एस प्लस नाइन राइट सो यू कैन सिंप्लीफाई दिस Laplace transform as k upon s plus three square. Okay. Now, if you want to take inverse Laplace transform of this Laplace transform, that is k upon s plus three, the whole square. Again, we are going to neglect the exponential first. Okay. So here, here you can clearly see in place of s, you have s plus three. Okay. And if you neglect the effect of exponential, you are going to multiply your function with e raised to minus three t and the remaining term will be 1 upon s square okay now you know the inverse laplace transform of 1 upon s square right so it is t so your function becomes k multiplied by e raised to minus 3t into t okay so if you get something like this basically k upon perfect square first you have to make perfect square then you have to neglect the effect of exponential then you have to Take inverse Laplace transform of remaining term. Okay. Now let's say if you are in this situation, you get something like this: k upon s square plus 6s plus 14. Now you can clearly see the denominator is not a perfect square. Okay. So first we are going to make this denominator into perfect square. Okay. So for that, what we are going to do is here you can clearly see this is a square plus 2ab plus b square, right? But here in b square we should have nine, right? Then only it will be perfect square, right? So here we are going to separate this fourteen into nine plus five, okay? So here it will be k upon s square plus six s plus nine plus five, okay? So if you simplify it, it will be k upon s plus three the whole square plus five, right? But to adjust this into the formula of one upon s square plus a square, what we are going to do is we are going to write this five as root. Phi ka square, okay. Now we can take inverse Laplace transform of this term very easily, okay. So first we are going to neglect the effect of this exponential, okay. So for that we are going to multiply our function with e raised to minus 3t because here you have s plus 3, okay. So if you are going to neglect the effect, you will have e raised to minus 3t in your function, okay. So k into e raised to minus 3, and you have to take inverse Laplace transform of the remaining term, and the remaining term will be 1 upon s square plus root phi ka square, okay. So the complete inverse Laplace transform of this term will be k e raised to minus 3t, and the inverse Laplace transform of this will be 1 upon root 5 into sine root 5t. Okay. So hope you understand all this situation. But let me tell you, in transient analysis, you have you can get unilateral as well as bilateral. Okay. Here in all this situation, I have assumed that all these functions are unilateral, basically a right-sided function. But you can get a left-sided function also. So let's deal with that too. Okay. So let's say if you have k into u t, then the Laplace transform will be k upon s, and the ROC will be real part greater than zero. Okay. And let's say if you have k into u of minus t. Okay. This is a right-sided function. This is a left-sided function. Okay. U of minus t is present in left side. Basically, t less than zero. Okay. So the inverse Laplace transform of this will be simply minus k upon s. Okay. For right-sided function, it is k by s. Here you have positive sign. But for left-sided function, the transform will be same. But you have only negative sign here. Okay. And you have a change in your ROC. Okay. Here the ROC was greater than zero and Here you are having the ROC of real part less than zero. Okay, so let me tell you this thing that if U T is not written in f of t, okay, in all the example that we have seen above, there U of t was not written. Okay, so in that we have assumed by default that U of t is present. Okay, and if in your function U of minus t is present, then only you have to take that function as left-sided function, or by default you have to go for right-sided function only. Okay. Now let's see how you can use this u of t and u of minus t to distinguish between your right-sided and left-sided function. Okay, so let's say if you have a inverse Laplace transform of 10 upon s plus 1, here you can take any constant value. Okay, so the inverse Laplace transform for this year you will have. 10 e raised to minus t u of t. Okay, so earlier we were writing only this 10 e raised to minus t, but in transient analysis you have to write this u of t also. Okay, 
now let's say if you have 10 upon s plus 1 into s plus 3 then for your inverse Laplace transform first you will simplify this by 1 upon b minus a first term minus second term formula okay so it will be 10 upon b minus a will be 3 minus 1 is basically 2 then first term which is nothing but 1 upon s plus 1 minus second term which is nothing but 1 upon s plus 3 okay so it will be phi e raised to minus t u of t note one thing here i am writing u of t with all term and your second term will be minus phi e raised to minus 3t into u of so that's it for today thank you guys